day six camp review continued. So this is what camp looks like after day six. I just really love this Kodiak 10 by 10 canvas tent. I mean, this, this tent has been through one heck of a windstorm up here and several big storms in Arizona and Colorado, and uh, it's done great. But let's take a look inside. On the outside here, we have a couple zippered, we have a zippered door on the right and a screen window, a full screen window on the left, which is very nice. Stepping in, let me go to wide view. Stepping in immediately to the right, I have my camp stove set up and my kitchen set up along with a four foot expandable leg table to put some essentials on and my duffel bag of fresh clothes and sundries and whatever underneath the table. Got a hanging bag with a light and some essentials. I love this bag here. I strung this bungee cord to hang over my cooking supplies, hang it over the top of the stove. And a lot of times I cook outside under an awning, but the wind's been so severe, I didn't set up the front awning that goes off the front of the tent because it's in, in a wind, it's just, it's too harsh, so. And looking to the back of the tent, which is really nice, is we have another zippered door, zippered window combination on the left, and we have a zippered window, pretty much three quarter length, on the right hand side. So it's pretty warm, but it's breezy. So I've got the back and the front screens unzipped to allow the breeze to come through here and cool it off. I'm camping for free, so this is dispersed camping on the Dixie National Forest in Utah, just outside of uh, Lake Panguitch. And uh, each night I've seen several deer. Oh, actually a lot of deer. And uh, one night I saw a bear. So this is why this is always with me. If you're gonna do this dispersed camping and not stay at a campground, uh, I would strongly advise bear spray, and if you're capable and skilled enough, a weapon. This happens to be a Glock 10 millimeter, Continuing to scan the interior. We look over there, and I got a little table behind my cot. There's my sleeping cot with a little hanging lithium rechargeable lantern. And nice thing about having a cot, there's room underneath the cot to store a lot of equipment. But with this Kodiak tent, they have sort of a little shelf, uh, a mesh shelf that you can hang across the top. And you can see I have a shirt over there and I have a down jacket right there. And sometimes I wear that down jacket when I'm sleeping in the sleeping bag because some of the nighttime temperatures here in mid-May have been in the low 20s, very cold. And up top there, you see another hanging accessory bag. That's a real nice feature of this Kodiak tent are these hanging accessory bags. Stepping toward the back, now you can see out the front. And you can see on the left, out the front here is the zippered full zippered slash window screen combination door and on the right side it's just the zippered window and it zips all the way down let me zip it out so now you can see the windows fully unzipped and then the flap you can roll up and it has a couple holders so you can roll up the the fat flap window flap and secure it to the inside of the tent i really liking this tent between the two poles here on the front awning 
is where I usually install the vestibule, the front vestibule, which I usually have my stove and stove cooking station set up inside of that. But you can tell it's a little breezy here now, but it's certainly not the 40 to 60 mile per hour gusts I had on day one through three. So that's why I didn't set up the outside cook kitchen and the outside vestibule off the front awning. It was just too windy. So that includes what fishing camp looks like after day six. Just keeping it real. Mav Hunter out.